Irv Gotti, what's up, man? It is a man? pleasure. I am overjoyed when they said, Joe, we got to go up to hot and do I said, that's necessary. Yes. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> and you know what? We've been waiting. We've been trying to get you for such a long time. And I I knew you were working on Tales, so yes. you've been busy. And I've you know. still got two episodes left. And New York, I hate to say it, but, you know, I'm like, I'm really here because I live basically in Atlanta because that's where we shoot because it's a tax incentive. So they give you 30 cent on the dollar. Damn. So I, I, I got to be there. Yes. I got to be there. Right? And then with me like making my move into movies and television, so beautiful. the business is in L.A. So yeah. I have a home in L.A. I have a home in New York, of course. Yeah. But I have a home in Atlanta. And New York is usually, and this is where my family is. Yeah. And you know what I'm saying? So I want to be here or whatever, but. I got to be wherever the work is and wherever I, I got to do what I got to do. Well, listen, New York is always proud of you. Always happy for you. Anything that you I, do. I represent New York wherever very I go. Tough. Yes, yes. There yes. is no <laughs> doubt about this. Yes, earth. I represent New York everywhere I go. Everyone knows New York is in the building. Yes. Yeah. Let's talk about Tales because, one, just being a fan of yours and all of us should be fans of yours and what you've done for hip hop and open the doors for so many people the list goes yes. on and on yes for you to go ahead and create tales is such a shift from music but it's still music it's right still music yeah, yeah what made you want to create tales well the necessity and hunger right? yeah <laughs> because when i stopped and started my sabbatical from yeah. the music <laughs> business because i i actually was just burnt out I was, truthfully speaking, I was going hard since like 92, 93. Here it was like 06, 07. I done been through so much drama and I worked so hard. So I just wanted to fall back. Right. So I always wanted to do TV and film. I feel like I'm an entertainment business guy. Yes, you are. Music, television, in, in films, right? So I always wanted to make TV. I always wanted to do it. But I was getting a little resistance with the people of Hollywood. Right. They, I would get into every room because I'm Irv Gotti and they knew who I was and they would compliment me on my music background and everything, but they, it wasn't getting me over the hump. So I racked my brains and I said, I need to think of something. They respect me in music. I need to think of something where that gets me over the hump. If I take hip hop songs and I turn them into movies and do like Tales from the Crypt. Right. An anthology series and I'll call it Tales and I brainstormed that whole thing and I got over the hump. God, and, I just... and BT, Stephen Hill, thank, yeah. thank the good Lord for Stephen Hill. He loved it. I pitched it. He loved it. And he let me make it. You know what? I don't ever really hear people generally be, you know, be happy for a brand new series. This was the first time that I saw the people excited about this, right? And I, I just, I'm just proud of you, man. I'm happy Thank for you. you because I know when you create something, you do it for the people, right? Yeah. And when you get that love back, it's like the best shit in the world. Yes. Minus the shit. Yeah, of course, okay, absolutely. It's the best. It's the best in the world because. Mm. I wanted the hip hop culture to love tales because I honestly, after I brainstormed it, I made it for the culture. Yes. I made it for people like me yeah. who love hip hop. And I said, listen, I want everyone to love it. Like, so when I say that, don't think I'm excluding anyone. I want everyone to watch it and everyone to love it. But I said, I want the culture to love it first. Yeah. So when it came out, I was on pins and needles. I was like, yo, I just want them to love it. So when the response came back, overwhelmingly like they loved it they loved the series they loved the concept they loved everything about it it was the biggest reward for me so how's hollywood now they're like oh, Herb, oh they, yeah they, they, yeah yeah they loosening up but that that goes without saying you know it was the same thing in the music business in the music business i was getting pies thrown in my face you know what i'm saying like <laughs> i you know i i, I brought jay-z dmx up to TVT, he turned them down. You know what I'm saying? So it's no different. It, it wasn't until you're successful, then they start listening to you a little bit more, and then I went on my onslaught. The same thing's going to happen here with TV and film. 
I love that you're humble enough to always take up the challenge. Like, you're not like, oh, I'm too good. I'm not going to do that. You should know who I am. You know what time it is. Because, listen, I don't know if I could be like that. I might be like, fam, have you seen my track record? Do you no, know what listen, it is? Listen, this is interesting. I'm going to give you an interesting story. Okay. Okay. I'm not going to mention the guy's name. <laughs> I'll let y'all try and figure out who I'm talking about. But it's a very personal, close friend of mine. Right. You know, not a rapper or anything. He's but he's in like the TV and film in that world. And we had a real conversation. And I was basically telling him because I wanted him to do this with me. And he didn't want to do it with BET. Mm. And he was like, BET's whack and thing. And I basically said, look, man, I'm not a dude like that wants to talk about my past and my past success. Right. I said, yo, that's kind of whack that every time, and he's a legendary dude too right. in his field. So I said, it's kind of whack that we just keep talking about stuff we did in the 90s, and yeah, we was great, but it's whack. And I'm like, here we are, BET's going to give an opportunity. I said, I don't care what they give me. I'm going to take whatever they give me, mm -hmm. and I'm going to run with it. And I said, you're thinking you have to forget everything that you did. And yes, you're this amazing person, but you're an amazing person in this field, like me. I'm an amazing person in the music field. So I'm trying to do a TV series. So if I got to take shit thrown in my face right. again, that's what I'm taking. Right. And I'm going to just how in the music business, I made it work and grind and grind until at the height of my music career, I could have signed four monkeys. I literally could have brought four monkeys into Def Jam <laughs> and said, Leo, give them a million dollars. And Leo would have said, what? And I'd have said, give him a million dollars. And Leo would have gave him a million dollars. Right. You understand? Because I warranted that. So I was trying to tell him, we got to forget the past and put in that work. Right. Martin Scorsese gets a, he got $120 million to make Wolf of Wall Street. I'm sure he didn't get that for Mean Streets. I'm sure studio mm -hmm. execs was telling this legendary guy what to do. So I'm yes. like, we got to strip ourselves of our ego, of everything, and start over. And I said, we're talented enough, and I'm definitely talented enough, where I'm going to break through, and in TV and film, I'll be sitting with you here yeah. in like five years. Give yep. me five years, and I'm going to be like, yeah, it's all good. You understand? <laughs> like, like, yo, I got four movies. They don't even... And you're like, how'd you get that greenlit? I didn't get a greenlit. I just said I'm doing it and I'm doing it. And that's how it'll be. Yeah. But, you know, I'm, I'll am i put in the work. I know what it is and I'll put in the work. Do you ever get tired of this? Just the work? No, I'm, my sabbatical... Yeah. <laughs> I re-energized myself because yeah. that's how I was with the music business. I didn't want to... I was like... I didn't want to do it no more. I was burnt. I yeah. was burnt out. But now I'm rejuvenated. Yeah. I'm I'm totally ready for the next 10, 15 year run. Now probably 10, 15 year run, hopefully I make enough money yes. where you're like, yo, where's God? They said he's on some island. Yeah. He's just chilling. He just he doesn't do shit. Yeah. He just <laughs> <laughs> that's what we all want. That's what that's the goal, uh -huh. right? But you know that's funny, because I got a bunch of billionaire friends and I always ask them, why are you going to work? And they just be like, yo, we have to. We have to work. And I'm like, no, you don't. No, you don't. Yeah, but, you know, they came up differently. Everyone has a different way that they came up. So I'm definitely going on the island and yes. disappearing. Me too. I'm with you 100%. <laughs> I'm definitely going on the island yes. and disappearing. And no one could get to me. That's definitely going to be me. But those guys, they go to work every day. Bless them. Bless them. And they're worth billions of dollars. One guy's worth, like, 20 something billion God of a guy my man Steve Madden I had this with Steve Madden the shoe guy because I consult for him actually oh my god so we had this on his jet and I talked to him he said Gotti I just I gotta go to work you understand he's <laughs> worth like 3 billion good for him yeah he has whatever makes you happy yeah, I feel like maybe it's the the hip hop life cycle, man. It's exhausting. It's a different grind for us, man. See, I, you know and I'm I mean? talking about me as if like it's anything. You've done it, been through it, lived it. This is what I tell him. Exactly what you it's said. It's different. Exactly what you said. As it's I say the same pressure thing. Is exactly different pressure. Exactly what you said. I said, listen, I ain't doing that. They said, yes, you are. I said, yo, nope. you don't live the hip hop. I said, when you are in the hip hop culture, I said, I've literally risked my life for this. Yes. I've I've risked going to prison. Yep. I beat the feds. Yep. Everyone. Why? Because I was hot in hip hop and I knew some street guys. You understand? So 
I, I explained that a hundred percent. I'm like, yo, I'm like, imagine you're the hottest, hottest uh, company in the world. You're going to a club, and I literally used to have like mm. thirty dudes around me. Half of them had pistols. Right. And I'm, and I would sit there because I'm smart. Yeah. You know, so you sit there and you got like, I would be like, this is really crazy. Yeah. Because as the hip hop, the hot hip hop back, you have to go in that club. Yes. You got to let people see you. So the dingy strip club where you know everyone in there got guns, yep. you got to go in there. Mm -hmm. You understand? And I'll be damned if I'm going to be the only one without a gun. Yeah. Right? <laughs> right. <laughs> right. So you're going in there. But when you sit and think about it, you're like, this is completely insane and it's only the hip-hop culture yes. that demands this justin bieber never has to go there no he probably wants to go there though yeah. because he's the beebs yeah. and he wants to go to magic yeah. city or whatever but he doesn't have to justin timberlake didn't have nope. to go go to these things it's only this culture it is we got to take care of each other because you know, we are really in it together and in the hip-hop culture actually the opposite happens yeah. oh he's winning I'm going to get him. Yeah. Oh, he's on top. I want his spot. That's what that's the hip hop culture. Do you feel like you ever had that? And I'm only thinking cuz in my mind I never remember you really yes, going I... out of your way to try to do bring somebody else down because no, they were winning. No, I wasn't like that. Now, competitive, of course, we're all that's competitive. That's what I was. Like when when I was coming up and I tell Diddy this all the time, he was the one I I wanted to 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 beat. Yeah. He was he was just killing it. He owned the city. We was all watching him, shiny suit out, yeah. getting all the money. And he was the one that I was like, I'm going to get him. I'm going to get him. I'm going to get him. Matter of fact, I told him, if you look at Flavor in Your Air Remix, I'm in there with Mike Geronimo. Yeah. And my man Hype shot it. And I said, Hype, give me the same shot as Diddy and, and, and Thing. <laughs> I said, give me the same shot as Diddy and Biggie for me and Mike. And he sat me in there. And Yo. it's the same shot. Yeah. With Mike in the front. And I'm in the back. And I'm bopping. And I was like, yo, I'm and I was just so hungry but I never dissed him like yeah, I no. would never do that you know what I'm saying I would never come forward and be like oh fuck him or whatever like that it was never that type of competitive it was just competitive where I'm gonna outthink him out hustle him outsmart him and yeah. win that's what it's about man it's just about winning you don't yeah. have to tear everybody down to yeah. to be part of the winning right vibe. I even I don't like like right now it's like with hip hop I don't like the the old and new the separation oh yeah no of course like not. even with flex i told flex i didn't like it when i said, I said flex leave the young dudes alone you talking you killing them i'm like and i just think a different way yeah because i think of a way like my generation of rappers has said everything there is to say yes that is true right so when you think about it little uzi migos i love what they doing because they ain't sounding like us yeah what do you want them to say we said everything. Really? You're never going to say anything more than what our generation said. Yeah. We talked about everything and at a high level. Yes. Right? So that's why I love what they're doing. They're being different. They're being themselves and it's hot. Applaud them. That's yeah. dope. What do you want them to make? Juicy again? Yeah. We heard it. Yeah. Can't make it. You Even can't make you so if a dude comes out, it was all a dream. You're like, yo, what's this dude doing? Yeah. Yo? <laughs> We heard that already, dog. Get exactly. Out of here. You understand? We <laughs> yeah. haven't heard raindrops. Drop, Drop top. top. You yeah. We ain't heard that. So applaud it. Yeah. I love all the new artists. I love Travis Scott the most. He's like dope. And his his production. And once I found out he's making these records yes. his own, I'm like, this dude's a genius, man. He's on a different level. He's on a different level. Like, and even I don't think he gets enough love. He no, should get he more love. I agree. I agree and with you. And he makes big, you know, I'm a big record. He makes big radio records. Yeah. Goosebumps and that sweet. Because yes. you're sweet <laughs> like the Coco. Yeah. But all you want to do is the Coco. <laughs> Hanging out with you is a no-go. I think that's so great that you care about hip-hop. And love that you hip -hop. don't shade people never, doing their that's thing. never gonna be me but do you feel like there's enough young people who are doing what you did right it's different like oh they were artists they're they're doing their thing but bosses right like creating their own the artists has become their bosses like with us it was like me dame like Eriza, diddy right shug cash money baby slim that that is kind of gone 
that's that is kind of gone. You don't really see it. You see it a little bit with TDE, you know, Top Dog. You're right. With you see it in him, but pound for pound, it's not a bunch of us right. out there. It's not I don't a know. Bunch I think I would like to see that because I feel like you guys really fought for your artist. Oh, like fought like this. You weren't gonna get over on Ja or Shantae or whoever it was. You'd be no like, shot. nah, this is not what we're gonna do today. No shot. No shot. I mean, you. We was calling the shots. Exactly. Yeah. And you know, even when I was uh, reading up, just I remember you posting a bunch of Instagram tweets and about everything that you know you've been a part of, which is amazing. Yeah. And I was thinking about how you brought "Ain't No" to funk, and people don't realize how crucial that was for Jay, right? Yeah. Yeah. And. I just think that's crazy. Like, yeah. you know what I mean? Because sometimes people don't correlate you two together for whatever reason. Yeah, yeah. How is it to see Jay now and to see everything that he's it's doing? It's unreal. It's yeah. unreal. But Jay is Jay has now surpassed where I'm even shocked at anything he does. So when 444 drops and he has the whole world talking about it and yeah. the, the money and he's changing the coach and having them thinking about investing yeah. you know, and stuff like that. And, oh, the strippers is hating him because yeah. they're not throwing that money that for the last two weeks or whatever like that. But I've watched Jay do this. So many times that I've I'm not shocked anymore. Really? No, I hit him and I said, "Joe, great album. I'm not shocked. Peace." <laughs> like I'm not shocked. I'm not. I'm I'm totally not shocked with Hove anymore. And you're working with Title because that's where people can see the uncut versions of Tales. Yes, I did that deal with my brother Jay. How? I love you saying my brother because a lot of oh, times again brother. it's about showing love to each other and there's nothing wrong with that in yeah. hip hop. Yeah. That's my brother Jay. Listen, me and Jay's 30 years this year. I met Jay-Z when I was 17. Yes, I am 47. Yes, I am. And you don't look And I don't look 47 cuz I got a haircut right yeah. now. If I didn't have a haircut and the grays was out, that's you'd be like Still, nah, nah. 42. <laughs> right? Yes, you know and but yes, I yes, I've known Jay since 17 or 47. So we're 30 years in. So Damn. that is my longest in best friend in the game wow. well jaws like you know yeah of course and jaws like different but jay is my absolutely my brother where did you guys meet in london because i we was our connection is with jazz so me and jazz was signed to the same production company they wanted to make jazz like the jazzy jeff and fresh prince so i was a dj i had this guy romeo who i was with they said yo go to london with jazz do all this dj and stuff on the album i said cool i'm 17 years old we get over there i meet jay jay was like if you could believe it his sidekick <laughs> right so as soon as when jay started rhyming i was like this dude is different immediately was like he's he's fucking ill right so now we're over in london jazz is making an album me and jay hung out for like a month and just <laughs> built that brotherly bond we just was out there having the time of our life jazz was working we really didn't have nothing to do so we was just running around damn yeah that was 30 years ago when you look at how much time flies do you have any regrets just looking back on your career. You know, career? people say, no, nah, I have no regrets. Yes, I have two regrets. Not one, but two. Mm -hmm. One involves Jay. I should have never, like, entertained signing Nas after he made Ether. Got it. I made Super Ugly. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Mm -mm. And above and beyond, I let my ambition get the best of me. And I just thought Nas coming to Murder Rink is like pop coming to death row. We going to be ill or whatever yeah. like that. And I should have never did that because it, my ambition blinded the fact that I was doing something wrong against my brother. And who cares about the money? We're all talented people. We're going to make money. We're going to be great. That relationship with Jay is more important. Mm. And that is one of my biggest regrets is doing it. And I love Nas. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Nas is my brother. And he understands when I say that. I said, yo, Jay, I made super ugly. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. he said, I got more shooters in Queens than you and screamed my name. God, hey. Mm -hmm. I, I was riding. I'm in the car. You understand? So, so to do that, that was stupid. But my number one regret, that's two. My number one regret is J-Lo. Because... Uh, 
And I hate even talking about it. But my number one regret is definitely J-Lo because she asked me. She was on the cover of Elle magazine. This is with the I'm Real and the Ain't It Funny records. We made two colossal huge. records. Huge, huge records. And she asked me to be a part of the interview. So I was high. Right? Damn. I was high. And I just got off the phone arguing with Tommy Mottola mm. because he didn't put Cadillac tie on the record when he serviced it to radio. Mm. So I said, Joe, you're killing me. I gave you two colossal records. You're killing me. How are you going to kill me like that? You're sending mixed signals with my man. Why'd you do that? You got him in the video and you ain't serviced the record with on him. You making people confused. Right. I just wanted the record with John. I said, Joe, but why are you shitting on me? Yes. So me and him is in a fiery conversation. I'm on a lot of ecstasy. Yeah. The phone hangs up, and literally a minute later, da -da -da -ding, and here's me. I answer the phone. Fuck is up. Oh, Straight my God. Straight like that. Or... I said, this is such and such from Elle Magazine. I was <laughs> told to give you come here. What the fuck you want to know? And I was on 10. I was angry. And they seen they had a live one, and they was like, oh, okay, I'll just get right to it. J-Lo said that the I'm Real record isn't about Diddy. And I said that bitch is lying. Uh, yeah, that's a regret. That's the biggest regret because let me let me first talk about me and J Lo. Yeah, we was like so good friends. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Like we was a, when we was around each other, it, the chemistry. There was a reason why those records came out. Like, Beautiful. Yo, it was a chemistry. It was a trust. She trusted me yes. with the guiding of that music and just believed in me. And I delivered. I'm Real was number one for 21 weeks. <laughs> Ain't It Funny was number one for like 14 or 15 weeks. These is two colossal records yes. that J-Lo was now bumping in the hood. Yes. So our chemistry was ridiculous. And she was nothing but great to me. Nice and great. And because I'm high and an idiot, you understand? Yep. And, you know, during that time, I was feeling like invincible. I was the invincible Irv Gotti. I could say and do whatever I want. And it wasn't until I read it. When they put it in the quotes, Jay said, that record isn't about Diddy. Yeah. The very next line, Irv Gotti says, that bitch is lying. Like, I apologized to her a million times. I will continue to apologize. And I don't blame her if she never lets me around her again. Mm. I'm an idiot. But I'm man enough to know that Absolutely. I'm an idiot. And I'm smart enough to know that, yo, she's never going to come around you again. No. <laughs> and rightfully so. Absolutely. Like, when I tell you she did nothing to want. Like, me and her never had anything but a great time and love yeah. and energy. Benny Medina, her manager, was like, Irv, you're doing all her music. They wanted me to do, like, every single record. <sighs> they was like, yo, we're not making records unless you do them. Or if you say they're good. That's how Benny was moving with me. Look, I, and here it is. I want to be in movies and television. I could have probably been made right. like a colossal movie with yep. Jayla. You know what I'm saying? Yep. I think about all that. Like, how easy it could have been. We could have did Griselda Blanco. She yeah. could have been. I would have convinced her to gain 50 pounds. Yeah. This is your Charlie <laughs> Theron moment in Monster. Yeah. You're going to gain 50 pounds. We're going to ugly yeah. you up. And you're going to be the fucking godmother. Yes. yes. But, I heard she's doing that now, too, which I hope she kills. Uh, I just, I love that you've always been honest. Through the good, the bad, ugly. You had to go through some things. But listen, I mean, isn't that a big reason why people love you? I'm sure that's probably why everybody around you the close. People, people love me with my honesty because I just, I'm not really political. Yes. You know. Thank God. Like, I should never give that story with J-Lo. It, it portrays me to be a complete idiot. No, nah, it shows that you manned up to it, idiot. man. But it is, but you manned up to yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what I'm saying. I'm like, I'm an idiot, but I'll let you know when I'm an idiot. Exactly. I'm an idiot. <laughs> I'm a complete and total jackass. Like, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, there was nothing. With Jay-Z, I'm an idiot. Yeah. I'm no Jay, 17. Since Damn, 17, yeah. I'm not supposed to do nothing to go against the grain with my man. Yeah. But he, I'm sure he understood. He understood After a little a bit. But he, no, he, he said what it was. Yeah. Like when we had our heart to heart yeah. and talked it out 
which was an ill conversation, by the way, because it was me and him and my two young sons, Sonny and JJ, was like our security. But we was in such a deep Aww. conversation, people would come up to us and be like, yo, yo, we see y'all talking. I just wanted to give y'all love. And, and bounce. Went, yep. Yeah. That's how, that's how real the convo was. And, you know, he... Uh, he he knew he knew me well. He yeah. said, "You let your ambition get the best of you, to where you would have killed me." Yeah. And I said, "Yo, I would never kill you." Like I, I was like, "Yo, Jay, I would never kill you." I, you know what I'm saying? That I'll do the total opposite for you. You know yeah. what I'm saying? I get. And he was like, "But that's what happened." So it was a real conversation, and me and Jay is is golden now. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? But it was definitely something that tarnished our shit for a minute. <laughs> Do you feel that all these experiences have helped you now when you're creating tales and now going into the TV oh, movie world? Oh, for or... sure. So now you're like, all right, I need to handle my business. Oh, for sure. Like, <laughs> like all of all of the trials, tribulations, everything to lead up to this point has made me, a, I'm kind of ill. Yeah. And I'm ready. I'm ready for whatever. Which is actually good because who knows, had you started a little too soon, you might have... Messed it up. Yeah. Yeah. So you know, I'm I'm I become you know everything is, I I give God a lot of credit. You yeah. understand? And I'm like everything it, it with me. I just feel that he he's crafted it. Everything, every person yeah. that has come in my life, every artist that has come in my life, I feel God has brought them to me. That's why when people be like, "Yo, I want to get with you," I'm like, "Yeah, if God brings you to me, it's all good. If not, I can't help you." Mm. I said, but if you're supposed to be with me, God is going to send you my way. Now, I know from what I understand, Murder, Inc., you're actually creating a show, TV show around. Oh, yeah. The beginning and everything. The whole story. I said TV series because I didn't want to do a movie because it's a big story. Yeah. So, you know, I chose to do a TV series. I got to deal with Paramount. It's already in the pipeline. Wow. It's already in the works. You know, but TV, when I talk these things, everyone be patient because TV and film. It takes a long time. It takes a long time. And it's a it's a way longer process than making an album. You know what I'm saying? But, yes, I got the deal with paramount and yes we're making a murdering tv series we're getting the writers in the writers room all of together and it's gonna be insane how far back are you gonna go like are we gonna see jay-z and yes. dmx yes. and everything yeah, they're part <gasps> of my life they're part of my life there is no there is no irv Gotti story jay-z gave me the nickname you want to see how I got the nickname? I was on 560 State Street waiting for Jay. I was his DJ at the time, and we used to go on shows and everything. And I don't know why. You would have to ask Jay. He walked out of his apartment, 560 State Street, Dame, Biggs, all of us is out there getting ready to go on the road. And he stopped me. He said, I'm going to call you Gotti. He said, Joe, I'm calling you Gotti. And like everything else Jay does, it stuck. Mm -hmm. I was Irv Gotti. I was Irv Gotti that day. But you'll see that. You'll see when I first met Supreme, <gasps> Kenneth Supreme McGriff. I was on Guy Abroad. We were shooting the Get the Fortune video. And my man BJ says, yo, you want to meet Supreme? I was like, Supreme, Supreme? <laughs> yeah. He said, yeah, Supreme. He wants, he wants to meet you. I say, cool. I'm thinking this giant of a man is going to come. Supreme's like 5'6", <laughs> y'all, with green eyes, with a crazy yeah. looking eyes. He comes over. Speaks great, like talks nice, very pleasant. And first conversation I had with Prem, he was like, "Could you make movies?" And I said, "Not really. I'm just doing this video." And he was talking about he wants to make movies out of Donald Goins novels, which we did. And he made Crime Partners, but they locked him up. Damn. Do you have to get approval from people for using them in it? Here's the rule of thumb with things like that. Okay. You could use everyone's name, but it has to be then it has to be 1 million percent accurate. So you can't fictionalize anything if you use everyone's name. Because then they could come back and they could say, he portrayed me wrong, slander, this right. and that. If it remains 1 million percent accurate, then they can't say nothing. Yeah. Like Jerry Heller sued them before, I think he died, but Jerry Heller was in a lawsuit for Straight Outta Compton because he said they didn't portray him accurately. That's the only lawsuit from that. You're not yeah. getting anyone else that's coming forward that's saying they didn't say so. Some of them scenes had to have been close to real, probably. But I mean, there's no telling if someone says, oh, this is not accurate. Like, unless they got different proof. But if you have proof, I mean. Right. But it's still, it's, if we're having, sitting and having a conversation, yeah. it's my word against yours. So it could get sticky. Do you think? 
people watching this, they're going to feel like it's getting sticky? There'll be a few characters that's in there that I'm quite sure will be scared. Oh, gosh. <laughs> That'll be scared. But maybe I won't. I'll change their names. Yeah. Just to avoid. To avoid all things, I'll just change the names. Yeah. Kind of, it's kind of, it, it may be kind of cool if you change the names of certain characters, kept my character, Jaws character. Yeah. You kept certain characters. And, you know, they could figure it out who, who it is. Exactly. I mean, I think it's pretty no. There's no way I'm not. Addressing make, it. There's no way I'm not making a blockbuster, no hose barred <laughs> TV series. And just know I made a TV series for the simple fact of I'm going to get to the nook and cranny of it. Yeah. I'm telling the whole thing. I ain't leaving nothing out. And I feel like you have to. Otherwise, people are going to say your story for you. You know, and I feel like it's important now that you... I think that's always been a problem even within hip hop is that if we don't share our story, someone else will create this false narrative about us. Yes. So that's why I'm happy that you're doing this. I'm happy too. Any idea when it's going to be out or just you're still working this through? I could get a rough estimate will probably be either the end of next year or sometime in 2019. Got because it. this is a process. The shooting, the writing, it takes yes. months and months and months. Yeah. And I'm not going to I'm not going to rush it. Yeah. I want it to be absolutely perfect. Got it. You know what I'm saying? I don't know who to cast as me. Mm. That's a tough one. I got to figure out who I'm going to cast as me. Any ideas? Any you know, you know, you know me and Drake is so cool. Yeah. Like when this first came about, I was like, Drizzy, you gonna play me, Drizzy. Yeah. <laughs> Drizzy. And I was like, when I really sat there and thought about it, all of the 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 executive uh me, the me with all of the chicks or the women, right. he got that. It's when I'm on that block with Supreme or in in BJ and the Supreme team dudes and I'm a boss. Right. That's where I'm like, ah. But I said, he's such a good actor, he may be able to pull it off. To body. He just has to probably be around. But now he's too big. I was going to say, I don't think. Drizzy can't commit to any TV series. <laughs> you understand? Oh, oh we're going to, you would have to pay this guy like. A, a lot of money. You'd have to back up a truck full of $100 bills and be like, is this good? And he'd be like, nah, Gotti. Two trucks. Yeah. You understand? <laughs> Rightfully so, though. Rightfully so. That's why I said he's, he's actually, he's too big. Yeah. To. To play it. He's the biggest rapper in the world right now. Now, for Tales, from my understanding, you wanted to do Dear Mama. Mm -hmm. And it didn't happen. I wanted to do uh, uh, Ambitions as a writer. Okay. It was a dope script, too. Like, I'm saying dope, dope Why didn't script. it happen? Because his estate is in a little thing. You know, yeah. Tupac's mom was uh, was married to this guy. Right. I don't know the guy. Right. And what I heard when I got a thing, they said, Irv, now's a terrible time. You're never going to get it cleared. And I said, why? They said, because the, the husband oh, no. that Afini was married to, they didn't get a divorce. Afini was in the process of getting a divorce, but God. she passed away. So he made, he made claims for the estate. <laughs> like, that's my... That's my stuff because I was married to Afini. So they're like in court. So while it's like that, I couldn't get it. Because I'm, I'm, I, was, I was really, I had a great relationship with Afini. Like all of the Tupac records we sampled, she loved them. We spoke to her. She really liked Ja. She used to always mm -hmm. look at Ja and remind of uh, his, her son. And uh, we had a great relationship. So I thought I couldn't wait. And I want to use... People like Pac and Biggie, why I, I I love these guys so much, and I want to use this song because then they get a residual. Like it's my yes. way of them getting some money yes. and keeping them alive, keeping their music alive, but also in a dollars and cents thing, they're getting money. Yeah. I'm, yeah. I'm paying them to use that song, and now they get publishing, they get a royalty because this song is in it. But I couldn't use it. Oh, Hopefully so. by next season, it'll clear up where I could use it. I hope so. Yeah, I have a monster script for Ambitions as a Rider. Gosh, clear it. I have a monster uh -oh. script. And I was going to use, like, have you ever seen, like, True Romance? Yes. Okay. True Romance 
Christian, for y'all of you who didn't see it, Christian Slater plays, it's like a love story. <laughs> Quentin Tarantino wrote it. It's crazy. But he used to talk to Elvis. It's crazy. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. With the thing. So he used to be like, and Elvis would be like, who loves you, baby? You always aces <laughs> with me. But it was imaginary. He would think imaginary. So the ambitions is a rider. I got you. I was going to have it be about a, a, a high school basketball player who's the biggest basketball player. He's with gangbangers and everything. And media is like, oh, he's a gangbanger, but he's the best player in the world. So he's going through the struggle of should he leave his friends behind or move forward. I was going to borrow a little when Deshaun Jackson went through that with Philly. Yeah. And of course, I went through that, but on a music level, right? right? About leaving your friends to the side. And I was going to have it where before he goes to a game, he puts on his headphones. No. Dun, 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 and Pac would be there. And like, you ain't, you going to leave your partners? Who else going to help them? Now, matter of fact, you going to get 50 on these guys tonight. And he would go out. Score fifty Damn, points. This been good. Yeah, it's it's gonna happen though. Sooner or later, it'll get. I'll be able to clear it. But it was gonna be where you was gonna see Pac, like how you see Elvis, and he's talking to him, and Pac would be like his father figure because he doesn't have a mother and father. Oh, this would have been good. Uh, next season, next we'll season. Put it as out. long as as long as we get the clearance next yes. season. <laughs> Now, I remember the story about Suge Knight walking into a studio session with you and Ja. Oh, and yeah. it wasn't on a happy note. Nah, it was, <laughs> I tell you that story. That's a good story. And this explains how me and Suge became friends. Right. So when I sampled the Tupac record, the uh, um, Shed So Many Tears, they was like, yo, Suge got to clear that. Because I went to Interscope because this was before he was on Death Row. Right. So I thought I'd just have to talk to Afeni and Jimmy Iovine or yeah. somebody. And they both said Suge controls everything Tupac. He has to clear it. So Suge, oh I've heard all the stories and everything like that. So <laughs> I'm in L.A. He reaches out. I said, yeah, I'm at Enterprise. Come through. He said, I'll be there in like five, ten minutes. So I got like 20 of my dudes out there. Studios flooded. All street dudes. Right? Preem was out there as well. <laughs> You know what I'm saying? So Preem was with me. So we all like waiting for whatever. Yeah. And it's like if he's, you know, we heard stories, him trying to play dudes or whatever. We ain't having it. Yeah. You understand? So when he comes in, nobody's smiling. <laughs> so I just imagine 20 dudes, killers, Ooh. 20 killers with me and ain't no one smiling. Right, no one's smiling. We sitting there like that, and shit comes and smoking cigar. He got like two, three dudes with him. They ain't smiling, and he's sitting there looking. I'm like, "What's up?" Not smiling. He said, "What's up?" And he's like, and his first words, he says, "Oh, y'all ain't on no Hollywood shit in here." <laughs> <laughs> nope. words. I said, "Uh, nah, we ain't." You know what I'm saying? And the crazy thing about my man Preem, he's the only person I ever see. I don't give. I don't care who was around. They respected this dude. They yep. knew him and they respected him. So I'm just telling you the, the God's honest truth. So he said, Prem, he's like, what's up, Prem? He's like, yeah, what's up, Shug? And then he was looking around and he said, man, I'm going to give you all that record for free. And so he gave us all of those times we sent, and we we sampled Pac's voice on on the, on the, uh, the, the, the pledge yeah. record. If you remember the beginning mm-hmm. I, and the end, I said, it's his voice free so what what do you want me to do right like everyone has their stories about suge but here it is i didn't know him he didn't know me he comes in he has a respect for us we have a respect for him he gives me the tupac sample he doesn't charge me one penny what do you want me to do with this guy after that thanks get out the studio you understand yeah right so i'm like yo good looking and we just start talking, and he stayed the whole night. Wow. Yeah, he stayed the whole night, and we laughing, joking. None of that stories that you heard, I believe those stories. He right. just didn't do them with us. You know what I'm saying? With us, it was a respect in the bond, and it was a respect thing. And that's that's what it is to this day. To this day, it's like when we seen him in L.A., he, when we seen, seen him in L.A., it's always love. So what do you want me to do? Like New York people were like, yo, why are you... you, are you Cool. I was gonna ask. Yeah, they 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 would be like, "Why are you cool with him? You know this or you know that." And I'm like, "Look, man, my man BJ said it best because, you know, one of some of our gangster homies. They was like, "Why are you doing this?" So BJ told him. He said, 
He said, if we listen to what everyone said, we shouldn't mess with you. And I'm not a right. person like that. Like, I, I treat people how they treat me. So if a dude gives me nothing but love and respect, yep. I don't, like, I, I got to give him some love and respect. And with Sugar, it was even deeper because he gave us that sample for free. Yeah. He charged, remember when Little Mo mm -hmm. sampled gin and juice? Yes. It was rumored to be that he charged uh, Electra a million dollars. So that's what I was like, damn, man, he come with that million dollar shit. I can't do it. I can't, like, we can't, we got to just scrap the record. Damn. I can't do it. So I was preparing for the worst. Yeah. Like, the biggest sample that I cleared and paid for was Michael Jackson, Rock With You. For the, I did it for the Shanti Rock With You remix. I paid a quarter of a million for that sample because I just thought Michael Jackson, well, Rock yeah, With You, hey, this could really help catapult her or whatever. So I was, I was prepared to pay something like that. And the man said free. So what do, what do you want me to do? Did you ever feel like you could maybe mend relationships between Suge and other people? Or is that something you're like, mm, I got to step out? Because that would be nice. Because I'm vibing with you, Nessa. Yeah. And thing. I'll give you this. I, I love Diddy. Yeah. I had... A heart to heart with Suge saying, just leave it alone, like you and him. Because I said, I'm cool with you, but I never fronted. I would tell Suge, yo, Diddy's my brother. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And when I seen Diddy, I'd be like, yo, Suge is my brother. I fuck with him. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So I had a talk with Suge, and he actually told me, he said, you know, tell him we all good. And I said, don't say that, yo. And I'm going to tell him that if the, he said, nah, I got it. It's all good. Yeah. Even with the, uh, if you remember with J-Lo, this, yeah. is when, this is when me and J-Lo's relationship was at an all-time high. Right. I'm giving you this too. But, I, you know, remember when Shug, there was rumored to have like a sex tape about yes. J-Lo? You remember that? Yes. Yeah, I told Sugar. I, I mean, I told Sugar. I said, "Yo, she throw the M's up, dog. That's murder ink." Yeah. I said, "You can't." I said, "You can't do that. That's my. That's my sister." Yeah. And I said, "Yo," and I told Sugar, "I love J Lo, nigga. So you can't. You can't do that. Like, yeah. if you got love for me, and he's looking at, he's smoking a cigar. <laughs> he's like, he said, "You know what?" He said, "Tell her, she ain't never got to worry about that." Word the mother. And that's when I went back to jail. It was like. Our relationship was all time high, and then shortly after that, uh, I did the dumb shit. Oh, Could you believe Irv, that? Come on, <laughs> like, Irv, come on. That and, was a way harder to deal with. Are you kidding? Yeah, but I would. I, I, I'm riding for J Lo to yeah. this day. She, whether she likes it or not, like if I seen her uh, getting any trouble, I'm riding. Yeah. To the fullest extent, yeah. you know what I'm saying? That's just I love her. Yeah. You know, she don't have to love me. I'll just I'll just love her because I fucked up. You know what I'm saying? That, that's real though. Yeah. That's solid. You have yes. Yeah, if someone talks bad about her or anything, I'll be the first one to be like, What? Shut the fuck up, yo. And he, and she's happy right now and she's yeah, doing her I, thing. Listen, I like all of her pictures yes. and everything. I love that. I just I love her. <laughs> she's with A Rod, she's happy. I love it. You know what I'm saying? Like yeah, I, yeah. we 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 was we had like a good thing. Yeah. And it was no <laughs> listen, crystal clear it was no ever no type of trying to mess with her it was always like brother and sister yes. family type things because she was throwing she would throw the m up yeah and i used to just bug because i'm like she's the biggest star in the world yeah and she throwing it up yeah and i said i know the influence she made mad latino yes. chicks throw it up yeah i said rule i said like, rule our whole latino base is basically she's a big yes. thing to do with it yeah. you know what i'm saying so yeah, that, those are the two things we should. But Suge, he messed with me where he would really talk to me yeah. and, I, and I could ask some things and he would listen. Yeah. I'm, I'm going to let you go soon because I could talk to you forever. <laughs> but I had Kevin Lyles up here a couple of days ago and he was talking about how you could have been the president of Def Jam if yeah. you wanted to. Well, I wanted to. They wouldn't let me. I wanted to. Yeah. That I felt that was my natural evolution with success with Murder Rank. Yeah. Uh, with Def Jam. I wanted to be the president of Def Jam. Yeah. But I only have myself to blame. The feds ran up in Worldwide Plaza. They ran up in the offices. So once that happens, this like, they can't let me be president of Def Jam, and I understand it. Like, I, but hate, you I hated been. it. Yeah. Oh, I was 
listen, I was born to be the president <laughs> of Def Jam. Yeah. Like, you know what I'm saying? I I felt Def Jam while I was up there having to say, I felt it was my label too. Yeah. So it wasn't even like me, like it's a job. I would have treated it like murder rank. It yeah. was it was no way I would have let it fall or anything. Yeah. Like that's Def Jam. Yeah. I'm going all out. Yeah. I'm calling in favors. I'm I'm flying wherever I need to fly. If I gotta go down and talk to Jeezy and inspire him yeah. to make out this is the thing. If I gotta go see Kanye and you know what I'm saying, maybe take him to France <laughs> and get in his head and make some ill like this is the level of yeah. which I would have did it. It wasn't just me just being a figurehead. I was gonna go in. Yeah. I was gonna completely go in. But you're going in now. I know you have new artists that you're working with. Artie here with you, can we bring him in? Is yes. that okay? Yes. Artists have for the last 10 15 years they all been trying to get at me but i just again i'm like god god brought me these artists this is what i'm doing and the reason why i'm doing it is because they're so dope yeah like if they wasn't dope i would never be here oh to absolutely tell you that, like i'm not a liar Irv is, i mean we've heard the stories about yeah so how they, many people have you kicked out that tried to work with you with you know during oh. the heyday, I've been like, nah, you're done. Oh, forget about it. You hear this? Forget about it. Do you it. hear this? You can only I imagine. Know. Forget about okay, it. Okay, so let's start off. Everybody introduce yourself so that All we right. know who's who right now. Yeah, I'm Dave O, one half of Fitted Circle. And I'm Dallas, the other half of Fitted Circle. I am Boogie Bird. I go by the name of Supreme. 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 <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so Irv, talk. Murder Inc., man. Murder I, okay, so this is Murder Inc. Inc. This is the new Murder Inc. Josh right. still down, Black Child. You know what I'm saying? That's... But this is what I'm running with and moving with now. I'm moving with this new energy. Okay, for every single artist here, what's the one thing that stands out about them? Uh, I, that's I could explain. Let's go I could each explain one. That. I could explain it easy with these guys. It's the new energy, the youthful hip hop energy. But what I'm trying to instill in them is to give them what I know about music making and hit records and big records. But these guys, the youthful energy. Dave O is a genius. He's a producer. He's yeah, producers yeah. for the group. Genius, he said you're a genius. Yeah, he's yeah, a, he's a like, genius, and he's like an executive man, kind of dude. Yeah. Okay, this dude is is. 18 years old, pure artist. He looks 18. <laughs> rock star. Yeah. Yeah. Listen, rock star. Okay. Like, I can't wait till they have a massive hit record yes. just to see what type of crazy shit he's going to yeah. do. Yeah. <laughs> right? Yeah. Then Boogie, Boogie Bird is like, my brother, he was with my brother, and my brother was telling me about him for like a year yeah. before he got to me. So then when he got to me, because what Chris was saying was basically, yo, when he get next to you, it's over. Because yeah. he was like, he's multi-talented. He could sing a little. He could rap. He got melodies. He's Ooh, a yeah. song maker. He's a hit song maker. He's a big record maker. All these different things. And when I got next to him and we started working, it all came out. It was like big record. Even just now, he got this On You record that he just did that I'm going to put in the All I Need episode, and it's a chick record, but it's, it's ridiculous. You know what I'm saying? So a lot of versatility that makes me want to go to the studio. Then my man Supreme, it's like, yo, my man BJ got, got to him, he, you know what I'm saying, got yeah. me to him, played me one record, just played me the record. Just one. Just played me one record, and the record was so brilliant and so big, just a big, awesome record. I played it for 300. And I was like, yo, I, I, I want to fuck with this guy. Yes. I played it for 300. They was like, ah, they went crazy. <laughs> you got to get him. You got to get him. Yeah. But when you hear his record, like, I can't, I don't know another artist that I could say, like, I could compare him to. Wow. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I don't know if I like yo. Yeah, listen yeah. to this artist, <laughs> cause look, he he's, he looks like a rapper, everything, but he's like singing. And but his singing isn't like anything that you're thinking you're gonna hear. Like it's oh. it's like a folk song, but gutter. It's mm. like mm -hmm. it's like a hip hop country song. It's a, like <laughs> almost like it's a country yeah, song, but yeah. for the for hood niggas. Yeah. You understand? Yeah. That's the best way I could explain it. But when you hit, it's just a huge record. So that's what inspired me with these with these three artists. They each share something that's unique within them and they could all win 
and have their own lanes. Are other people jealous because you're taking the time to work with them and not yes. them? <laughs> yes. Do you guys, now I want I want to hear from you guys, have you guys been hated on and been if like, yeah, y'all, why y'all? Every right. time he yeah, pulls up, really? really? yeah. involved involved in any Somebody of us, people are always saying like, like why y'all? Yeah, yeah, let, why put y'all? me in the booth. Why you don't right. sign me, Irv? Why did you sign me? Give me a chance. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's cool, though. Of, right. It's all good. Really? What's the biggest thing you've learned by working with a legend? Work hard. Keep work working. Hard. Energy, Never man. stop working. Oh, sorry. Yeah, no, go ahead. The, the, you touched this. The energy <laughs> matters. <laughs> energy matters, man. It really matters. Work, like, consistency matters. You understand? It's not... This is not the... There's no limit for us. You understand what I'm saying? It's, it's just going to keep going. It, right. can, it can't be stopped. Yeah. I think my biggest thing I've learned from Irv since I've been with him... Um, is to stop spending my money. Listen, uh, do you know how big that is? Nah, that real means he talk. really, he cares L- yeah, for you. Nah, it's real. Because they saying. be out here watching, you know what it is, yeah, you're spending yeah. your money, and they, you know, he doesn't want you to be dependent on the exactly, system. Exactly. I want men. Yes. Yeah, so, so I've learned how to spend my money, and I've definitely, like I said, I've learned how to, um, you know, use my, use my, out. that's what I was going, use my out of box and creativity. You know, like I always tell everybody, Irv has taught me elements of music, you know, uh, reaching different voices, you know what I'm saying, mm. using different voices, never being the same character all the way Isn't through a magical? record. Isn't it magical? It is. Is it you what know? you expected working with Irv Gotti? This is for everybody. Did you think <laughs> to be what honest, you're getting now? To be honest, Irv is a little more cooler than what I expected. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah, I, I thought it was work, work, work. Yeah, <laughs> I, yeah I thought it's it was like... Yeah, yeah I'm fact. To him. Yeah. <laughs> it makes nice. everybody feel comfortable. You know what I'm saying? Like it's not a, it's not hostile. So it makes you, it makes work fun. It makes it yeah. right. It makes it's always great right. working fact. with talent. Right. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And hey, he, he, mic, he told us about the highs and lows too. But I can't give y'all too much of that for him. <laughs> 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 yeah, yeah, I can't give him. That's all that. I'm gonna say. Yeah, we can't. It's too not. It's not like it's concerns with me. It's not. By chance that I made hit records. Absolutely not. It's not a yeah, chance. It's not by chance. On my Kanye cocky shit. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? But it's not by chance. I have things in my head that I think work and they're timeless work. You understand? So I feed these guys all of this knowledge. But also, I want you to consider this. These guys are all 25 and under. So this is the young generation yeah. of, of hip hop, right? So I have to be smart enough to know that they what's up. Mm-hmm. Don't bully them. Let them do what they do. And then say, no, 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 no. Go with this. So a lot with these guys that they've been in the studio, I'm like, no, 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 no. That's it. Yes. That's it. And then I can articulate why is it. Yeah. So after I articulate why is it, they all are learning so much that I can see in a year's time they don't need nothing. They know why that's a hit, how they could do it again, and thing. I'm giving them all of the all of the knowledge that I got. Have you told them any of their records suck? Yeah. Yeah. And it's good. Oh, I'm no, let me tell you, Ashley, because harsh. if you don't remember, because it's funny, because the record <laughs> we need, which is now on Tales, right. and Push on BT Jams, it was funny because that record wasn't that record. When I when I presented that record to Irv, we need we need just a little more. Li- that wasn't the hook. That was four bars in my verse. Just four bars. He was like, everything around that needs to go. <laughs> everything around it needs to go. Keep that piece. Add more voices and then rewrite two more verses. Done. Uh, yeah. Okay. <laughs> I'm gonna tell you something. Right, go. I'm gonna tell you something. I'm gonna tell you something. This is why, and I, I, I learned this because Dre said it, right? Dr. Dre has said, you know, people think, like, you, he just could touch him and they go. But it don't work like that. Mm-hmm. For every genius producer, it's a 50-50 thing. Mm-hmm. So I'm inspired by Supreme, Boogie, Davo, and Dallas. Mm-hmm. And it makes me run to the studio because now I want to see what they do. Yep. You see what I'm saying? So it's a 50-50 joint venture. You just can't, I just can't go, oh, yeah. platinum. Yeah. It, don't, it don't work like that. You understand? Yeah. And this way, and also, yeah. I really, I really drill the honesty. Yeah. So if I don't like a record, I'm like, it's the worst shit I ever heard, yeah, nigga. Yeah. 
Yo, but because <laughs> now they understand when I say yeah, they know it's honest. Yeah. Now, now here's the last thing. I know who I am, though. I know I'm Irv Gotti. I know everyone wants to get to me. Yes. Right? So I also know, like, okay, they're going to give me their best verse. This is why I'm going to make, when I have people like this around me that's talented, they're going to be stars because they're going to go all out because yes. they want, deep down, they want, when they turn that on, for me to go, oh, shit, yes. not because I'm going to give it to them. Yeah. So they're going to give me their all. Every yeah. single time, because they want that reaction. Yep. That's why certain things, Snoop Dogg. Mm -hmm. Snoop Dogg always sounds the best when he's with Dre. Yep. Because when Snoop Dogg could get in the studio with any other producer, he's like, nigga, I'm Snoop Dogg. Yeah. You, you who you are, but guess what? I'm Snoop Dogg. Yeah. When he gets in the studio with Dre, he's still like, yo, that's Dre. Yes. I got to come with it. Yes. And that's why... You know, the next step is a la da 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 He yeah. always sounds different <laughs> when he's with fucking Dre. <laughs> because forever he's Dre, and I will have that. I don't yes. care if Supreme sells 100 million records. He knows, yo, I got a session with Gotti. He'll have his cocky shit, and yo, I'm a huge artist. Mm -hmm. But he knows, oh, if I don't bring it, Gotti's going to be like, what? That shit was whack, yo, I'm out. It's no, it's no bullshit here. Man. And you always need, I always used to tell people they need that one person like that. Absolutely. Because when you could become big, you get a ton of yes men. Oh, my God. You see what happens? You know hey, good DMX story. Yes. So when we made What's My Name? Great record. Right? Great <laughs> record. Great. He delivered the verse in the vocals, and I said, because I have that with DMX. Yeah. Okay? What I just explained, I yep. have it with X. So he was doing the vocals, and I was like, everyone else was going nuts for the record. And he looked at it, and so while everyone's going nuts, he's just looking at me. He's like, what's up? What's up, Gotti? And I said, I don't like the energy. <laughs> yeah. He said, what? And he got <laughs> mad at me. Right? I said, I don't like the energy. I said, yo, this is supposed to be a thing, and yo, I don't like it. Yo. Turn, turn the mic and went back in there. And listen, you think it's a game? You think it's a fucking game? Is he talking to you? He's talking to me. <gasps> <laughs> you think it? And he's jumping. And you think, dang. And, but, but, but here, when he did that, right, I'm looking at Darren, who's my, my crime. Right. And Darren's like, Gotti, you son of a bitch. <laughs> <laughs> he said, you got him. You got him, Gotti. It's done. What? When he's saying, you think it's a fucking game? You think it's a fucking he's, game? He's talking and yeah. screaming at me. Because I said I wasn't feeling it. You brought out the best. Oh, but he, yeah. then he delivered. Then he, he, all of that, the X. And when he came out the booth, I said, now that. There goes Earl Simmons. <laughs>